What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Saturday edition of the weekly Energy Newsbeat Daily Stand-Up Recap. We appreciate you guys sticking with us all week. Stay tuned. The team has a great weekly recap. We talk about everything that happened this week. Davos was top of mind. Lots of reform. <laughs> um, Biden trying to ban natural gas. Absolutely unbelievable, guys. I'm going to turn it over to the weekly recap, guys. Hit the description <laughs> below for all the info. We'll see you next week. Would you buy a Ford self-driving car that automatically would drive to a repo company if you missed a payment? This is not headline news. I didn't, I found this on a little local TV station. So I embedded the video here and I just thought it was absolutely who the, the uh, newscasters from the local channel were like going, huh? can you imagine having your car wake up in the middle of the night and go, you a bad man and then run out and go to the, the collection agency. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, so to bring you guys into the fold here, Ford has filed a patent for self-driving cars that would basically drive the car away from the owner after a series of missed payments. In the, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny to be honest. And it's something I didn't even think about when it comes to self-driving and, yep. and this, I mean, self-driving and EV cars are different, but it's one of those second order effects that we like to talk about of, Oh yeah. And if the, you miss a payment now, instead of having the guy come up and, and try to slip your car into a, in, in into a tow oh, truck yeah. as fast as possible, you just all of a sudden look out and just see your car just driving mm. away. Now, here's where I bring up a couple warnings. They said the first infractions would be uh, the heater going on uh, really bad. The And then the sound. No, they didn't. Ob- You're just going to blast you with heat in the summer. Oh, yeah. And then they'd play rap where they would play some music that is not in your, you know, your uh, venue. You know, some people hate country western. Some people hate rap. They would just go to whatever you never listened to and play it really. For loud. Some people, they would just blast the Energy News Beat podcast 24 seven. Hey, there's some advertising for you. Hey, there here's another is, problem. Is, though, actually, is, is uh, uh, terrorism. Uh, and we know that the EVs are capable of being hacked. So what happens if uh, Big Brother, You here's where it gets really, uh, once they get the disinformation done, can you imagine putting something out on Twitter and they go, you bad, you very bad. And then they take, that almost sounded like Elmer Fudd, they take the car and it goes away, it goes into government oh prison your car because you put something bad on twitter the biden administration is about to just absolutely make it all worse uh you gotta love a quality administration this last article uh biden administration issues a new natural gas tax in the latest fossil fuel crackdown this is just absolutely despicable Mm -hmm. um this was on fox news And the EPA spearheaded the proposal, said it will help tackle wasteful methane emissions from the oil and gas sector, encouraging facilities with the highest emissions to level or meet or exceed levels of performance. You're going to get taxed, which begins at 900 per metric ton of wasteful emissions in 2024 and increases to 1,200 for 2025 and a thousand five hundred for 20 and 26 i just had another great interview with um some folks and this is a lot of money to the oil and gas industry unbelievable well again it's going to put the smaller companies out of business and it's going to lock in large you know you know large international companies i mean When it comes down to it, Chevron, Exxon, and BP love these type of rules. Oh, sure, yeah. Add a little tax on there. You know who can't stand it? The 90% of oil and gas operators who are considered small cap. So they don't account for a large amount of production, but what they do account for is a large amount of, you know, and they do actually account for a large amount of production relative to what the big companies do. But I think this is where I always talk about- 50% of the oil, Michael, in the country is made by private companies yeah but i'm talking about your mom and pop your mom and pop operators the companies that 
you know, the guys that are supplying, you know, are selling 15 loads, you know, 150 loads a month versus are doing 2 million barrels of oil a day. What I'm saying is Exxon loves it when they come out with this. There's a reason why the API who is funded by the large oil and gas companies have come out for a carbon tax. You think it's because they like the carbon tax? Well, no, it's because eight companies provide their funding and all eight of those companies would love nothing more than to raise the cost of oil and gas slightly to the point where it drives out their competitors and allows them to acquire them at half the cost. Your second order and third order magnitude are creeping up in these regulatory issues that I've been looking at, Michael. They have. Are you ready? Uh, the first um, class one, class two and class three it is absolutely bonkers on what they're doing in those. And then this goes in with their regulatory issues of shutting down coal that we just talked about. Germany is bringing all their coal back online. Uh, the Biden administration is cutting all of our coal plants quickly. Nope. nope. I'm with Oops. you. Winter freeze cuts at U.S. natural gas output. Um, for everybody who, who who's in the Midwest right now, I'm sure you are experiencing the the the, the quote unquote deep freeze um, that's going on right now. I'm here in Dallas. It's only 11 degrees, so it's not horrible. People here are are, are a little ridiculous, but sub zero temperatures in much of the United States have frozen gas wells, leading to a drop in production to the lowest levels in eight months, according to Reuters, citing local data. This report also dem- added that demand for electricity, on the other hand, was heading for a record high in some states, notably the one I sit in, which is Texas. The grid later there, ERCOT, um, had issued a conservation um, call for Monday on expectations that demand will break last summer's record. Here's that quote out of ERCOT. Uh, ERCOT. Operating reserves are expected to be low Monday morning due to the freezing temperatures, record-breaking demand, and unseasonably low wind. I got to throw that last part in there um, for all of our renewables folks. Unseasonably low wind. It's what happens when there's no wind. Unfortunately, the turbines don't spin. Um, Reuters also cites some data from LSEG. Its market research unit was suggested that demand for natural gas, including exports, could hit 164.6 billion cubic feet today, rising to a further 171.9 BCF um, on Tuesday. Both figures would be record breaking. In North Dakota, we saw gas production was down somewhere around 700 to 800 million cubic feet a day, while oil production had declined by somewhere around 250 to 280,000 barrels of oil per day absolutely unbelievable ironically we did see you know futures prices didn't hold up great but we did see spot prices specifically that henry hub spot price surged by 400 percent um over the weekend um hitting about 17 dollars per british thermal unit pound that compares about three dollars and then btu that is currently what's kind of getting traded on right now um absolutely incredible what's going on I, i mean it comes out to say um you know, you can put up the, the, the tweet from David Blackman. I mean, I mean, this says it all right now. You've got 0% wind going on. That's never going to help. You also have 0% solar. It is at 530 in the morning, so it's it's a little bit of a, a smoke and mirrors there. But absolutely unbelievable natural gas, even with being frozen, is saving the day. Hope everybody this morning took a warm shower and thanked your local oil field worker. Let's go to the op-ed. New report highlights green failure in Europe and warns America. Um, this one's pretty interesting. Uh, Rupert uh, Dowell's uh, report for the Real Clear Foundation has a couple great quotes in it. Uh, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Hmm. Uh, you know, this ties into uh, the Davos crew and everything else. Uh, the analysis of this Great Britain heeding the cries for decarbonization starting when Parliament wrote an 80% decrease Ooh. in emissions in law in 2008. They raised it to 100% or net zero in 2019. And since they have, it's been a disaster. Hmm. So um, the differences between the British energy cost and those here in the U.S. are staggering. Brits pay an average of $228 per megawatt hour for electricity from coal in 2022. 
and Americans pay an average of $27 per megawatt net in <laughs> huge difference. Yeah. Um, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. I talked about this last night on my show, low solo show, show low. <laughs> show low show. We got us a this, new podcast term show. The, the, this, this inflation reduction act, everyone's taking a bite out of the apple. You've got BlackRock buying up infrastructure companies. Why? Because they care about climate change. Absolutely not because they want a little bit of that government revenue. Right. It's absolutely hilarious. Former New York City Mayor uh, Michael Bloomberg was given well over $1 billion of his personal wealth to the Sierra Club to fund its Beyond Coal and Beyond Carbon campaigns. He designed it to rid the U.S. of every coal-fired plant by 2030. You, you, would, you wouldn't save the environment more if you just took that billion and flushed it down the drain than you would actually deploying it through the Sierra club and out into the economy. You know what, you know what? You know, Total energy printing out flyers. Oh, those our don't friends, come from oil and our, gas. Our friends over at a Total. Lot of flyers. Yeah. Our, our friends over at Total energy figured it out. They bought new, uh, natural gas power plants in Texas uh, enough to power the two nuclear reactors and they're going to make money on it. Yep, so absolutely. Yeah, would a second term mean for U.S. oil and gas? Uh, uh, second Trump uh, second term. term tr Trump, Trump term. Thank you. Let me say this. I got to give a shout out to uh, R.T. Trevino, uh, big dog over there at Pecos operating. He has said he makes more money when a Democrat is in power because the oil prices are higher. All right. Yeah. Uh, so all the oil guys are over here kind of going, okay, lowering regulatory issues uh, is good under the Trump Biden uh, administration. Biden makes them more money. He's <laughs> well, so, I we think what, what to expect from a Trump administration if he were to win again? Well, looser regulations, rig counts instead of going down are probably going to go back up. Oil right. production is going to continue to increase at a rapid pace because more smaller operators have the ability to produce. And guess what that means? Oil right. prices will naturally be suppressed. It's interesting from the standpoint of everyone on gas is generally a Republican. But right. we all make way more money when the Democrats are in power. So I love that they that that RT talks about this because it's really true. It also is good right. to point out that leasing on federal lands and specifically offshore is going to be a lot easier, which those two things move the needle way more than, you know, six exactly. loads. Exactly. Exactly. And this article has some fantastic points in it. Uh, but I think RT uh, was absolutely the best way we could articulate that point. Yeah, and to be honest, President Biden's liable to get us into a war with Iran. That's going to send prices through the roof. Oh, yeah. I might uh, get drafted, but that's, you know, who cares? Yeah, the hoodie and the blowfish are already at it, and we're about to, you know, he's going to go try to take out. He doesn't even know what he's doing, though. But, hey, um, I'm I'm ready for some ice cream. I'm a little hungry talking about Biden. Start with our good buddy Biden. He weighs in banning natural gas exports to save the climate. Holy cow, Batman. This is out of Politico. The Biden administration is launching a review that could tap the brakes on booming U.S. natural gas export nice. we're the largest exporter of natural gas yep. in the world we're really hoping that the doe will pause any new permits for industry because we know that the biden administration really needs a climate win in order for them to win the public yeah. win the election this is criminal if these politicians want to be elected or reelected this upcoming presidential election, they're going to have to make some bold choices and some bold moves. In the words of Scooby-Doo, rut row, <laughs> second order of effects are going to go horribly on this one. Yeah, I mean, I think here's the problem. The problem is... Natural gas is probably the only thing that can save us from 
climate change with while with while also not absolutely destroying the communities when it comes to how much energy we have available. So it's absolutely insane that they want to do this. Um, you know, we're about to cover why the EIA and the IEA need reform. The Department of Energy needs some reform. Oh, absolutely. And and also when you they're they're looking at thirty four trillion dollars in debt. But when you mm. talk about the exports, the math for exports, you got to have exports when you're in debt. $110.5 billion in exports this year. Uh, geez. All right. Anyway, let's go to market to be short of oil from 2025 on onwards, says Occidental CEO at Davos. Hey, I was surprised to see her there. Um, I said hi to her in the hall, but she uh, kind of was a little busy. I... I'm surprised. I'm not surprised by her comments. Um, and I'm not surprised that she's there quite honestly is because Occidental has done a great job. You've in order to survive in this, uh, carbon nutty world, they've gone down the carbon route and are getting the carbon subsidies and everything else. Um, uh, Holub said that uh, the near term, the markets are not balanced supply Demand is not balanced, adding that 2025 and beyond is when the world is going to be short of oil. So this is she, what she is saying is in direct contrary to what the EIA are saying and the IEA. Both of those are, you know, like missing some uh, cookies upstairs. I think this is another quote from her. I think the industry is going is looking at a scenario where we will be able to do all the right things we need to do as part of the mm -hmm. transition. She's got a level head on her shoulders, even though she's at Davos. I hope she takes a bath on the way out. She really does. I mean, we did the the Oxy Crown Rock deal we did on the deal spotlight. Little expensive, yep. little expensive. But if prices are going to rise significantly. Maybe the deal doesn't look that bad to begin with. Um, but yeah, it's surprising to see her at Davos, but also not. Oxy's a, uh, uh, if you had to say a progressive oil and gas company, they'd qualify as one from the standpoint of they dabble in ESG, they dabble in, you know, the carbon capture space, they've got their stuff. So they're, they're more, you know, it doesn't surprise me that Oxy there, I did see on CNBC this morning, uh, Michael Worth Chevron is well represented there. So they're all there, man. Hey, I got to give a shout out to Jamie Dimon uh, this morning. He had a, 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 also an interesting comment. He said, why can't we all just get along and say, quit having uh, the Democrats start, you know, yelling at the, the MAGAs because the MAGAs actually had some good ideas. And so he just says, hey, why don't we all have discussions? I liked what he had to say. Um, I don't always like what he has to say, but I want to give a shout out to folks when they do say something that was nice. I don't agree with everything, MAGA, but I don't agree with being yelled at either. So,